It's a must, period. Damn, Shaq. So harsh, bro. I like to end this show every day with a mic drop. I know mic drops, and that right there was a mic drop by Shaq on James Harden. Now look, we still got a lot more for you today, including a huge guest coming up next. I'm not ending the show right now, but Shaq almost ended Harden last night. And here's the thing. He ain't totally wrong. James Harden was given everything he asked for in Houston, but he never gave Houston what they ultimately wanted, which was a chip, the championship. Never won a ring. He never even got to the NBA Finals. But now, as Shaq said, he's got a little super team with KD and Kyrie. And according to Woj, he's got Kyrie as early as tomorrow. Today, Harden talked for the first time about his new team. You've proven yourself to be an elite player, and KD's an elite player, Kyrie's an elite player. All you guys have had the ball in your hands and been asked to make big shots. I'm curious how the three of you make sure that you guys come together and keep the main thing the main thing and find a way to gel for the greater good. Chemistry, uh, sacrifice, and, and like you said, we're all elite. You know, so depending on the game, depending on, you know, what's going on throughout the course of the game, that's going to determine who gets the ball and, and who makes the plays. Um, we're all unselfish. We're all willing passers. And we're, we play basketball the right way. Um, and that's all that matters. Oh, you know, I couldn't get through the first week without having my brother on the show. One of the 50 greatest players in NBA history, an original member of the original dream team, the one and only, uh, obviously, let me not leave out, basketball analyst extraordinaire for TNT, the Chuckster himself, Charles Barkley. What's going on, big time? How are you, sir? Damn, Gladys Knight got the pills working on that suit for the day. <laughs> you like it? Do you like, I does it work like for you? Dancing, man. <laughs> it, it, hey, man, you all, hey, you know what? You always look good. I give you love, man. You want the best, you know, you right up there with Michael Jordan, Alonzo Mourning. Those are the two best brothers I've ever seen dressed. You right up there with those guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make sure I reach out to them and let them know that my suit game has elevated. I'll leave it at that, my man. Let me get into some basketball talk with you because obviously the story of the week was James Harden getting traded to the Brooklyn Nets. When you first learned that that deal had been made, what was the first reaction you had, Charles? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be the best soap opera ever, probably. Uh, I can't wait to watch it. Uh, I actually said it like when they were started talking about it, uh, a month and a half ago. I think it's going to be fascinating watching those three personalities try to mesh in New York City. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing TV to watch. I cannot wait to watch it. Uh, so I I'm excited. Do you think it's going to work out with the big three in Brooklyn? How do you feel that's going to work out? I do not think it's going to work. Um, Kyrie and James Harden have not shown me, and they don't have to show me, number one, that they are do willing to do whatever it takes to win. Kevin has done it when he went to Golden State. He partnered with Steph and Clay and Dre, took a lot less shots, played defense, rebounded. James and Kyrie have not shown me that they're like, okay, I'm going to get a lot less shots. Am I going to play defense, rebound, do things like that to help the team win? I can only go by their track record, and their track record tells me they're not going to be selfless. And my biggest concern also is what are they going to do in the interior? I think they're going to have a tough time rebounding the ball. Now, they're going to be great offensively, but defensively and rebounding, I think they're going to struggle. Let's compartmentalize it a little bit or at least individualize it. James Harden first. What do you felt or how did you feel about how he handled things in Houston in the end? We all know that James Harden doesn't engage in load management. He shows up to play. We know he's averaged 30 over the last three games, one of the greatest offensive players this game has ever seen as far as I'm concerned. But he's taken a lot of hits from people because of how he handled things prior to his exit out of Houston. Basically, to force his way out of Houston. What were your thoughts about that? Well, uh, he deserves to hit Stephen A. James Harden went four straight games with less than 20 points. 
I said two years ago, and people thought I was crazy, James Harden might be the best one-on-one -on -one player I've ever seen. He is the best. He's not a greater player as Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, but as for scoring, he's the best one-on-one -on -one player I've ever seen. Those guys couldn't shoot threes like him. Uh, going to the basket, he is pretty much unstoppable. And so for him to go four straight games and get less than 20 points, he had checked out physically and mentally. So I had a problem with the way he handled that. And clearly the Rockets, he told the Rockets he didn't want to be there. They should have traded him sooner. But I was disappointed the way he finished his career in Houston because he completely checked out. He was wrong. Do you think they made a mistake in not trading him to Philadelphia and getting somebody like Ben Simmons, maybe a younger player in a pick? Do you think they should have done that with Philly as opposed to moving him to Brooklyn? Well, listen, I actually thought if I was to Houston Rockets, if they had given me Jared Allen, Dinwiddie, and LaVert, you know, or maybe my Joe Harris, I think that would have been a much better trade for the Houston Rockets because I'm a big Jared Allen fan. I love Dinwiddie. Obviously, he's hurt. But LaVert and Joe Harris, I think they could have got a better package from, uh, from, the, from the Nets. Yeah. Uh, but listen – uh, James is a hell of a player. I just thought the way he handled the thing in Houston was just very unprofessional. Let's transition to Kyrie Irving because that thing is that his situation has been bizarre to say the least. Started the year off telling the media that he didn't want to talk to anybody. Called a bunch of people peons in the media. Obviously played uh, the first few games averaging about 26 a game but then took off for personal reasons initially didn't highlight why and then he's been going court on social media trying to engage with elected officials to help social justice issues or what have you. What do you make of Kyrie Irving? Well it's time for Kyrie to grow up. You know fresh opportunity what does it represent what does it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot just uh you know, coming for you know eight years in Houston, and then you know having a fresh start with some unbelievable talent, and um, obviously the coaching staff, the front office, uh, from top to bottom, uh, the welcome has been amazing. You know, so it's a fresh start for me to, to go out there and ultimately have a chance to, to compete at a title. Bruce Beck, NBC New York. Hey James, what's your message to Nets fans on what kind of player and what kind of teammate they're getting? Um, an elite player, an elite teammate, um, an elite leader, um, and just a guy that's willing to do whatever it takes um, to rack up as many as many wins as we can. Um, sacrifice. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Hey, James. Uh, welcome. Uh, following up on that, I mean, you've proven yourself to be an elite player, and KD's an elite player, Kyrie's an elite player. All you guys have had the ball in your hands and been asked to make big shots. I'm curious how the three of you make sure that you guys come together and keep the main thing the main thing and find a way to gel for the greater good. Chemistry. Uh, sacrifice and and like you said, we're all elite, you know. So depending on the game, depending on you know what's going on throughout the course of the game, that's going to determine who gets the ball and, and who makes the plays. Um, we're all unselfish, we're all willing passers, and we're we play basketball the right way, um, and that's all that matters. Otis Livingston, CBS New York. Hey James, welcome to Brooklyn. Um, from your post-game comments after the Lakers lost to what your teammates were saying about you as far as being disrespectful uh, and also you being held out of practice until a trade was made, it got pretty ugly at the end of your tenure in Houston. Is there any part of you that regrets the way that it ended? I wasn't disrespectful to anyone. Um, those guys had just got there to Houston. Um, I've been there for a very long time. I've been through all the ups and downs, um, you know, with that organization. And I wasn't disrespectful towards anyone. You know, I just made a comment, you know, that the team as a, as a whole wasn't good enough to compete for a title. And, you know, at the stage of my career, right, where I am now, um, that's what I would love, you know. And so I wasn't trying to be disrespectful to anybody, um, especially not to the organization. 
And um, like I said, just I'm, I'm excited to be here in Brooklyn and, um, you know, excited for a new start. But do you re do you regret the way it ended, though? I mean, it's a place that you loved and you had so many highlights. Yeah, I, 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 re I regret because I'm not the type of guy to, you know, I don't need the attention, especially the negative energy, the negative attention. Like, I've never been that guy. Um, you know, so there was, there was some things you know, I felt like out of my character. Um, but the ultimate goal was to get somewhere, um, you know, where I can compete. And here I am in Brooklyn. You know, I have nothing but love and respect for that organization, uh, that city. Um, and everything that has, they've done for me and my family. Uh, much respect. Malika Andrews, ESPN. Hi, James. Welcome. Um, Sean Mark said yesterday that in large part, because you are pretty much going to be thrown into the fire here, Brooklyn has a schedule where they don't practice a whole lot. Um, you're, he's hoping that you will lean a lot on your previous relationship uh, with Kevin Durant what communication had you had with him in the days leading up to this? And how much do you think that that's going to play a piece, that previous relationship with both him and Jeff Green? Uh, that's a pretty special piece to lean on. Um, you know, I think me just loving the game of basketball um, and having so much talent around me makes it easier. Uh, I have, obviously having a conversation with Steve and, and Mike and the, and the entire coaching staff and then even the players today, I'm uh, more confident because you know the things that they they do offensively and defensively are are similar to what I've I've been you know used to in Houston. So um, just going out there and being me, you know, and and making the game easy for obviously Kevin and when Kai comes back, but you know our, our bigs, our shooters, and just being myself, um, and that's the most important thing. Greg Logan, Newsday. Hi, James. Uh, welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, I I just like to drill down a little bit on your thought process, even before training camp, making the decision to uh, ask for the trade from, from the Rockets to the Nets. Uh, how did you arrive at that? And was there conversation between you and KD and Kyrie when you guys worked out uh, in Los Angeles prior to the season? You know, How far back does this go? Um, as far as with Houston, um, just wanted to, after the bubble, uh, after that loss, just wanted to reevaluate my career and and uh, the team and, and the direction that the organization was going. Um, and then you look from top to bottom, from uh, the you know, uh, general manager leaving to you know Mike D'Antoni leaving, um, to reevaluating our our you know personnel and see if we had enough to compete with the best teams in this league. And you know as time went on and free agency and things like that started to go on, it was like, well. I felt like we didn't have a chance, you know? And so, you know, as much as I love the city of Houston, love being there, I think at the point in my career, it's not about money. It's not about anything else, but having a chance of reaching the ultimate goal is, you know, it's the winning uh, at the highest level, you know? So that's where that came into play. Um, it didn't, it didn't go as smooth as I would, I would love it to go, but I think, uh, you know, both sides are happy. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, James. Uh, first and foremost, welcome to Brooklyn. Thank you. Um, I guess you would know better than any of us in this room that, you know, winning a championship is not easy, right? You know, there's 30 teams, you know, of those 30, maybe five or six have real chances to win it. Um, you've Correct. been part of those five or six for God knows how long since you've been in Houston. Uh, you've had multiple runs deep. You've had it with different players from Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, uh, Melo, Dwight. Uh, I'm just curious as to what gives you the confidence that this time around will be different and that this group can get it done. Um, you, I mean, obviously you got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the team <laughs> and then surrounded by those guys, um, you have really good pieces in DeAndre, uh, Jeff, Shooters, um, and Joe, uh, Landry. Um, and I mean, you just look at this entire roster and it's built um, for any style of, of basketball you want. Um, and then the coaching staff who, you know, knows the game of basketball at a high level, you just add that all together. And it's like, uh, that's a, that's a legit chance right there. It was a no brainer for me. Rachel Nichols, ESPN. Hey James. Uh, obviously so many great players go without winning a title. There's guys in the hall of fame without winning a title. 
But how about you? How do you see your career in terms of how important it is to actually win that title, to complete what you want to do in basketball? Uh, it's not a guarantee that me coming to Brooklyn is, you know, guaranteeing a title, Rachel. But I think for me, giving myself a chance is very, very important. Um, you know, at younger, you know, giving myself a chance, but you know, wanting to get paid and wanting to, wanting to take care of my family was very, very important to me. Now the stage of my career is giving myself a chance to do something that I haven't accomplished yet in this league. And that was, that's very important to me now. And that's the situation that I'm in. And that's why I'm here in Brooklyn. Um, I'm excited for the new opportunity. Uh, obviously we know it's not easy. It's not going to be easy at all, but um, you know, with, with this roster and this coaching staff and this organization, um, I think we have a, a legit chance. David Aldridge, The Athletic. James, um, if Daryl Morey was still the GM in Houston, do you think he would still be in Houston? Um, I'm not sure. It's a really good question. Can't answer that. Justin Walters, Picks 11. Hey, James, welcome to Brooklyn. You and KD are much different players than you were, obviously, at your time at OKC. Was wondering how much can you bring from that experience to Brooklyn? And then a twofold to this is having a conversation with Kai and making sure that all three of you can coexist. Have you had that conversation already? Uh, we haven't, but you know, I think for us, um, it might take a little time, it might not. Um, I think all of us are very, very smart. Like I said, are very unselfish and we know what's at stake. So, I mean, it's just a, it's a matter of, uh, you know, coaches putting us in position and us communicating, putting, the, putting ourselves through positions and spots on the floor where we can be uh, effective and help each other out. Um, each game is going to be different, but I think as time goes on, since we're not really practicing, um, as we get a feel for, you know, throughout the course of games, that it should be a lot easier because, like I said, all of us are unselfish and we want to see the next man succeed. Not only just us three, though. We want to see our entire team exceed and play to the best of their ability. Howard Beck, Sports Illustrated. Hey, James. Um, obviously, when you make a trade request, you can't necessarily predict where that's going to go. Could have been a lot of different places. Can you confirm that Brooklyn was the top of your list? Why the Nets? And did you consider what some of the other options might have been had this gone a different way? Um. Yeah, they were on top of my list, but there are a few team, other teams involved as well. Um, I mean, it could have got it could have got crazy, but credit to you know the Houston Rockets, who were an unbelievable organization and um, you know worked worked with me as bad as it might look from the outside. Uh, internally, they worked with me and and they made sure I ended up here. So uh, much credit to them and uh, very very appreciative. Brian Mahoney, Associated Press. Hey, James, uh, obviously everyone talks about the sacrifice that you three guys will have to make. And, and Sean Mark said yesterday you all said you want to do that. Uh, my question is kind of how much can you sacrifice and still be, you know, a great player like you are? You've been the best scorer in the league. The ball's in your hands. If, if you're not that guy as much now, are you still, you know, an elite great player like you are? <laughs> of course. Taylor Rooks, Bleacher Report. Hey, James, welcome. Um, I know you're obviously still getting acclimated to this team, but when you look at yourself and you look at the pieces, what parts of your game do you envision, you know, staying the same for this to work? And what parts do you envision changing uh, for this to work with this team? Very good question. I think uh, for me, my play playmaking ability, um, we have two elite scores that the world knows already. Um, my job is to come out here, obviously score the basketball when needed, but my playmaking ability, whereas getting getting our shooter shots, getting our bigs, finishes around the rim, and making the, making the entire team better. Um, I think that's one aspect of my game that will will excel in, in, in this offense. And um, as long as I'm you know making my teammates better, it's not, it doesn't matter about the points. Like I think everybody knows that I can score the ball at a high clip, um, and that's where the sacrifice comes in at. Bob Windrum, Nets Daily. Hi, welcome to Brooklyn, uh, James. How would you describe your conditioning level now at this point in the season? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, back to Greg Logan, Newsday. Uh, James, we all know about your relationship with uh, Kevin Durant, long-term relationship. Can you go into your relationship with Kyrie a little bit and how critical do you think that will be because you're both used to having the ball in your hands and, and needing the ball uh, to create the way you each do? I think, uh, you know, we're really good at it, at creating and, and, and creating good shots for ourselves and creating shots for our teammates. Like I said, it's all the flow. You can't, I can't predict how it's going to go. Um, Kyrie might score, you know, 10 possessions in a row. You know, KD might score 10 possessions in a row. Like, they're, they're more than capable of that. And I'm fine with that, you know, because we're going to be winning and it's going to be good. So, I mean, tomorrow we'll see. And it's, it's going to be fun and I'm excited about it. Alex Schiffer, The Athletic. Hey, James, welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, obviously, you played against Steve Nash early in your career, but outside of that, did you, did you have much of a relationship with him prior to this trade? Uh, not really. Not really. But just having a conversation with him today was uh, it was exciting. You know, obviously, he has that point guard mentality, um, one of the best to ever do it. So just to go over the offense, uh, you know, watching, uh, I mean, just him explaining the offense, you know, in, in positions that he sees me in and, uh, you know, where he can use my playmaking ability was exciting. Uh, because obviously he's done it for a very long time at, at a high level. Ian Begley, SNY. Uh, James, welcome to Brooklyn. Did uh, How much, if at all, did, did Mike D'Antoni being here factor into where Brooklyn was kind of on your uh, wish list entering this thing? Uh, it, was a, it was a part of it. You know, Mike's an unbelievable coach. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's been doing it for a very, very long time, and um, obviously Mike is a factor, just being comfortable with him, being comfortable with Kevin, uh, knowing Kyrie, um, just, just the entire, just those four pieces right there, uh, made it easy. You know, obviously then being in Brooklyn, um, you know, for me, it was a no brainer. Ryan Lewis, New York post. Hey, uh, James, following up on two of your answers. I mean, do you expect, I guess, to facilitate a little more for KD and Kai uh, score less and facilitate more for them. And secondly, I'm not questioning, you know, your focus or your drive, but when you get questions about your defense or questions about your conditioning, do you use those to kind of self-motivate, you know, bulletin board type stuff? Do you use that to self -motivate? Nah, I'm already motivated. I'm as motivated as they come. Um, I don't really pay attention to the defense and the conditioning um, because everybody's started the same as far as like, you know, training camp and all that. So it doesn't matter to me. I don't really focus on it. I don't really pay attention to it. I know I'm one of the best basketball players that we have in this league. So, you know, my job is to go out there and focus on what I'm supposed to be doing every single night. Now to get back to your question, as far as facilitating, it just depends on the flow of the game. You know, some games I might, you know, be a facilitator. Some, some nights I might got it going and, you know, score the ball at a high clip. That's the beauty of having, uh, being versatile and, and being able to do more than one thing. Um, and same with Kevin and same with Kyrie. Um, just depends on every night is going to be different. Sam Amick, The Athletic. James, good to see you. Um, as far as trying to understand how you got to this decision, you talked about Coach D'Antoni and, and being happy that he's in Brooklyn. But I wonder when he decided to leave, you know, he'd been in the news a lot. We knew that was a possibility. But did that play a part for you, you know, and, and how did that hit you? And, and within that, uh, Tillman Fertitta and, and what role, if any, his handling of, of Rockets business might have might have hit you? Uh, yeah, when Daryl and, and Mike left, uh, kind of sat back and kind of re reevaluated everything. You know, those are two guys that I, were, I was very comfortable with uh, in their decision making uh, for the organization. You know, so once they left, I had to figure out um, was this, was this organization going in, in into a you know a rebuild stage or you know, were they still trying to compete at the highest level? 